no wonder from the east, the Igbos, to the houses, to the Yorubas, people are always wanting to know how to make the epic Epankoko. <music>Hi there, my name is Iko Uko. I live and work in Lagos, Nigeria. Now, Nigeria is in the western part of Africa. And if you look at the map of Africa, Nigeria is actually at the trigger point of Africa. And Nigeria is popularly referred to as the giant of Africa. In terms of my work and visit, I have had the privilege of visiting Nigeria from the north to the south, from the east to the west. And so I can safely say that I have experienced Nigerian food in terms of the variety, in terms of the different cultures, you know, as far as food is concerned. In Nigeria, we have simple categorization of our different dishes. We have the soups, we have stews, and we have sauces. We also have portages, or what Nigerians would rather say, you know, refer to as porridge. And then you have this other one, a lot of Nigerians categorize as swallows. And swallows basically are like, you know, a mash. Either you're using cereals or tubers for that. The dish I'll be sharing today is called Ekpan Kuko, and it is indigenous to the Efix and the Bibios of the south-south part of Nigeria. Of course, you know, Epan Kuko has found its way into restaurants in Lagos, um, Enugu, Aba, um, and other parts of Nigeria. section the leaves like that uh, just get it off not too big not too small enough for you to put little paste on top of the leaves and wrap as I said earlier Ekan Koko is actually a labor of love the wrapping process uh, first by you know adding some oil to the base of the pot uh, this is to prevent the cocoa yam wraps from sticking you know so you swell this a bit um, to get the oil well lined at the base next we add the periwinkle which has been topped tilled and washed and I'll show you how you suck this out. Like I said, this is part of the fun of eating a pan kuko. So you put that at the base of the pot. And it also provides elevation uh, for the wraps so that it also does not stick. We season that with um, salt and pepper. and dry pepper. I'm going to be using a uh, fresh scot bonnet later, but this is the dry pepper. We'll also add a little seasoning uh, stock cube, uh, which has been crushed. Uh, stock cube is actually quite uh, commonly used in Nigerian dishes. And so that's it. We now start the wrapping process proper.
remember I had mixed the cocoa yam and the water yam so you place that and wrap into little parcels like that with some bees peeping here and peeping at the base to help the cooking process growing up um, I know that Apak was just something that you would find the aunties, the older women coming together and doing the wrapping because um, usually they're not wrapping little pots like this, by the way. It's um, a, a big pot of Apak Kukwa, which is being cooked for the family. So you need as many hands as possible to do the wrapping. So you find the aunties coming round, and I remember then is dropping my aunties talking about who's married to who whose child is about to get married who has just divorced and all manners of stories um, as we say in nigeria all manners of gist going on when ikbankuko is being wrapped and so you take it little by little so that um, it cooks through you can't put too much for each wrap With Nigerian dishes, it is actually a lot of complex flavors. I mean, if you look at the goat meat with its flavor, fish, smoked fish, uh, cow skin with its flavor, the shrimp, the crab, and then finally you're going to add crayfish. It's a lot going on in one pot of, um, of um, a pottage, but that's the beauty about Nigerian meals. So we layer with some onion. And we layer with some cow skin. And some smoked fish. And some crab. And some prawn. And then continue to wrap, you know, so that the flavor of this is trapped in between. And so everything is um, well seasoned at the end of the day. Now, Nigerian have, Nigerians have started experiencing, and I, you know, it's something I'm actually excited about, where I'm finding that somebody from the north of Nigeria is very interested in trying out dishes from the south. And so I can go to Kano, which is in the north of Nigeria, and I can fairly well guarantee that I'll find Edikai Kong soup, which is originally from the south-south of Nigeria, in a restaurant in Kano. And same goes for Lagos. Um, I can also find a lot of Eastern dishes in Lagos. I do see that also that intertribal marriages is helping to break barriers. Um, my food blog, for instance, I find that a lot of, you know, Southern ladies who are married to Northern men are interested in cooking northern dishes and so they come to the blog and learn how to cook uh, those uh, northern dishes i am particularly interested you know in ensuring that um, even if i'm not from the north i can also can always try out uh, masa which is um, a fermented rice based uh, dish and so you know i expect my friend amina from the north to also try ekwan kuko as well so that way, we, we just start to build some unity in the country and um, more importantly, put more variety on our tables. So that will be it. And then the last layer of the proteins again. Um, that. And then we just add the claws for flavor. Add the cloth for flavor, add the last bit, and so we get cooking now. So we have water boiling, which will be used 
you know, for the ekpan koko. So in the meantime, I get this to heat up on low heat. The cooking is done particularly on low heat because koko yam takes a bit of time to cook and you want it to cook through. So we're going to add the water now. The thing with ekpan koko is that you go on the edges um, and this is so that the coco yam, you know, does not dissolve completely into water. So you go gently and you add the hot water on the edge of the pot, but not too much. Uh, this is the first stage of addition of water for it to just steam up a bit. Remember, you're cooking on low heat so that the coco yam takes time to cook through. And subsequently, we add more water until the cuckoo yam uh, is completely cooked. Now, you know, I talked about soups and stews. For the Nigerian typical soup, I would say it's water-based in the sense that you start with your meat and your fish, and then you pile on your vegetables, thickeners, and then palm oil and the rest. With that you combine it with what is called swallow it could be combined with rice or boiled yam or boiled plantain or boiled cassava now stew on the other side is pretty much standard sometimes it's actually fried and sometimes it's boiled but the major components of stews are tomato pepper of different variety onion some oil in it and then you add your protein sauce look for most Nigerians, if you check our fridges or freezers, because a lot of us do bulk cooking, you would always find a bowl of stew there. Now, I talked about sauces on the other hand. There are different definitions of sauces for, for us in Nigeria. Um, but I think sauce is just a term that we have just borrowed uh, from the European sauce, which is, you know, something that has a tinge of let me say english is not typically an african dish because really in the african setting we don't have what we call sauces like that i mean you could have something like we call garden egg sauce which is not actually sauce but a stew um, so the definition of sauce in nigeria is open to uh, further discussion we have our portages some people say porridge always another debate in Nigeria. So what I'm cooking is a typical pottage. You then go on to the other ones I, I talked about, which is the swallows. Swallows are typically, could be cereal or it could be tuba based. And usually these are pounded or stirred in a pot in hot water and you have a mold, which you then dip into the soup or stew and that's the meal. Um, snacks, a lot of snacks in between, a lot of snacks, a lot of street foods going on now. And I, I, I found out that increasingly uh, we're having people eat out more, a lot of them on the streets or in uh, outside restaurants. But yes, uh, street food and out of home eating is actually increasing. So the water has gone down and I will add, I said, I love chili so i'm going to add a little bit more i'll add some salt as well just to balance what i had at the base of the pot some seasoning cube crushed and then i will add shrimp head stock you know when i dress the shrimp i ground the head and sieve the water and that's what I'm using. It all adds to the flavor, in which case I don't need to add more regular water for now. When this goes down, I then add regular water. So we'll be adding the goat's meat at this point and that's because I had previously cooked this. So we just put that on top. As you can see, the the pottage is steaming through and so the coco yam is cooking as we go. So I add the stock and also add crayfish at this point. I 
and that's it you know just shake the pot a bit it's already loosening from the edges this would cook again for another 10 to 15 minutes so we are almost at the end and um, usually you know I stir from the sides so I don't break up the wraps stir from the side and at this point I can actually take out some of the obstructions the claws of the prawn which would have done most of its job of adding flavor but we'll also crack some of this later and I can actually take out the goat meat as well it's cooked uh, but this is just to allow me space to stir the pottage I can take some of it out and I'll return it when I'm done I'll still take out some of this okay so now I add the oil the palm oil remember I added some at the beginning but this is just to finish off that will be it and allow this to cook as you can see the the wraps are still there it's not all crumbled but at the same time you have a pottage the 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 sauce thickens i'll taste for salt it's good i don't need any more salt i mean like we say with um nigerian cooking or african cooking generally you add your seasoning and spices until your ancestors tell you to stop i think I, i've had good enough space to stir so i can actually return the goat meat put the goat meat back i just needed some space to stir the pottage you put the goat meat back so it absorbs the last bit of flavors and then I finish off with the scent leaf and this is actually to to add you know flavor dimension to the dish I'll just leave that to cook for just two minutes and Ipan Kuko is ready so we'll stir for the last time and then turn off the heat We have so many obstructions in this dish so many obstructions by the way obstructions in the nigerian term are the fish and the meat and so what this is basically saying that is obstructing the stirring of the dish it's it's a street language actually so i think is ready and as you can see the colors in the pot are as varied and vibrant as the people nigerians are passionate people we love our food we love to experiment and i'm hoping that with the kind of thing i'm doing with food we get to try each other's food i mean from north to south east to west we get to experience and experiment with other ingredients outside of our own locality and that is already happening and i believe it would continue to happen even more as the food space you know explodes and people get to see the variety and opportunities we have in nigeria so let me dish and i talk in into ekwan kuko And so, I mean, this is a dish. You're going with the cutlery and you're going with the hand at the same time. This is the periwinkle. I take out all the goodness from the outer shell and I soak from the front here. 
empty shell, meat in my mouth. They do look up on the front of the periwinkle there, the side of the plate, and I continue. And you know, when I'm done with that, I go on to use my hands for the prawn, I go on to use my hand for the crab. It's always an exciting experience eating a pankuko. I mean, beyond the nutritional benefits of this dish. So, no wonder from the East, the Igbos, to the Houses, to the Yorubas, people are always wanting to know how to make the epic epankoko. By the way, the Jebus of um, Southwest have something similar, but theirs is not wrapped in leaves like this, and they call it ikokore. Epankoko, my all-time favorite.